Hello, I'm back with a new video and in this one I'll be talking about SRIOV or Single Root I.O. Virtualization. SRIOV is a broad topic and it encompasses many different types of devices, but here I'll focus on network cards. What SRIOV allows us to do is to share a single physical device between multiple virtual machines. Right here, we are looking at Intel X540, a 10 gigabit network card. And if we scroll down here, and this is the output of LSPCI-VV. So we see that it supports up to 64 virtual functions. So basically up to 64 virtual machines can use this network card at the same time and each one of those virtual machines would appear to be using its own network card. It's very similar to pass-through, but in this case, it can be done to multiple virtual machines. The advantages of this is you save on PCI Express slots. You don't need an individual device for every single virtual machine. And the performance is generally better than using an emulated device like one of these virtual network interfaces even though vertio gets really close in performance but using physical hardware or being as close to the physical hardware as possible has its advantages next let's take a look at how to enable SRIOV and how to use these virtual functions of network cards and assign them to virtual machines. So your machine needs to support VTX and VTD on Intel or SVM and IOMMU on AMD. And it also has to support SRIOV. So on this one, on this Gigabyte uh, X470 board, this is what it looks like. PCI ARI needs to be enabled. On some boards, like this ASUS, it's called SRIOV. Some boards might lack this feature completely. And on some, it might be enabled by default and you won't even see this setting. So it depends. Another thing you need is a device, in this case, a network card that actually supports SRIOV. So let's take a quick look at that. So here I am on Intel Arc, and if I scroll down, I can see that this network card is indeed SRIOV capable. And you might want to do the same for your network adapter. If it's built into the motherboard, chances are it does not support SRIOV because this feature is more common for server class, Ethernet adapters, and the uh, consumer stuff generally doesn't support something like SRIOV. So finally, to enable it in Linux, let's open the terminal. Let's become super user. And let's check our grub. Nano etc default grub. That would be on Ubuntu. And you have to have AMD or Intel IOMMU equals on. If you are on Intel, it would say Intel IOMMU equals on. So if you are running GPU pass-through, you're good. That's already done, so you can ignore it. If you are just beginning, you need to add that and run update grub. Okay, so we are good there and one more thing needs to happen. We need to enable certain number of virtual functions. To do that, we'll run echo options and then the driver you are using. So let me open another terminal. LSPCI-K and let me find that network card. So it's using this kernel driver. So what you will do, you will do IXGBE. 
max underscore vf so maximum number of virtual functions equals and let's do 32 it's more than we'll need but hey why not and then you have to send it to etc mod probe ixgbe dot cons okay and now update initramfs dash u and i'll try to summarize all of this in the description okay let's reboot so let's open the terminal and let's run lspci and we can see that we have a ton of network adapters here so these all these are all the virtual functions we created so 32 of them but for each basically for each of these adapters it's a dual port card so total of 64 so one last thing LSPCI dash V and let's take a look at our adapter. Okay, I should have just gone straight there, but anyway. Okay, so this is what you expect to see. It needs to be single root IO virtualization capable and alternative routing ID also needs to be available. Those basically mean those two together mean that it the, that the card supports SRIOV. Okay, next step would be assigning this to our virtual machine and that's fairly easy. Okay, so let's open virtual machine manager. Our first virtual machine and let's add the two virtual functions or just one. It doesn't matter. We'll do two here. So here is our list of virtual functions. We'll do the first one. And just to show you that we can, we'll do the second one too. And each one represents one of the ports. So, okay, we have that. We also need to keep the virtual network adapter for now because we'll have to download the drivers. So we'll do that and let's open up the second virtual machine and we'll add also two network adapters. One, two, these first two went to the first virtual machine. This goes to the second. And it doesn't matter which ones you assign. Let's just, uh, I'll do it in order so I can remember. And two and three, okay. So let's spin up the first one. And by default, let's see. Okay, so driver unavailable for these two, and that's fine. So we'll have to be, that's why we added the virtualized network adapter. We'll go to Intel, then we'll download the complete driver pack. Okay, which is half a gig. So it's downloaded. We'll extract it. Okay. So let's go here, update driver, and we'll install the driver. Perfect, and it even knows it's the virtual function. And that's why we need the driver, because by default Windows doesn't know, it doesn't have any of the drivers for the virtual function. It has drivers for the actual device, but not the virtual function. So. Well, it's the same for the second one, update driver, and same idea. And this should be successful. Let's assign it an IP address, and I'll shut this thing down. We don't need it anymore. Not that it matters, but... Okay, so one is completely disconnected, and one, well, one doesn't have any cable plugged into it. That's this one, and the other port does have a cable. So... And we can start the second virtual machine. 
and I already installed the drivers there earlier. Okay, I need one of these is connected to the internet. They are just connected to some random computer. So, but there is a connection to something. We should even be able to ping the other side. Okay. And let's open up command prompt and ping 172.16.1.1 and same here so both of these are running let's see we can even make them run constantly so both of these machines are running off the same Network card, they are, there is one cable plugged into that, one port, the other one is unplugged. And so they are both sharing it. We could have multiple virtual machines sharing that. So more than two. Network cards are the most common use of SRIOV, but there are some other uses. Uh, the most interesting one is uh, would be graphics cards. But that is a topic for another day. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.